What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 198 of the Untame the Wild Soul podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Dialto, and this is Sunday Sermon number 10. Today, we are talking about evolving relationships with family as we grow. If you're new to this podcast, or this is your first Sunday sermon, these are shorter solo episodes, about 10 to 20 minutes long, where I do things like oracle readings, share my favorite prayers, poems, or excerpts from what I'm reading, I explore creative and inspiring ideas, thoughts and ruminations for you to be nourished and fed by going into your week. These are like wild and untamed gospel, heart ponderings, and delicious morsels of wisdom to spark your own truth, power, and love from my wild soul to yours. We recently surveyed our audience, and one question I asked was if people listen to these sermons, and then why or why not? Many people who said no mentioned being triggered by the word sermon, which makes total sense. So I want to remind you all that everything I do and create is centered around the belief that everything you've ever needed has always been inside of you. And even these sermons are for that purpose, to spark your own truth, power, wisdom, right actions. So sometimes they're going to land for you, other times they won't. So above all, Always, always, always trust your own discernment. That said, let's get into today's topic. I used to have a lot of tension with my mom around not being Catholic anymore. And if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you might have seen that I posted a picture of me with a cardboard cutout of Pope Francis um, just this past week. And um, during this week, I was home visiting my family. And it was like the best visit I've had with my family probably ever in, in years and years and years since I haven't lived with them um, in any extended period of time since I was in college, which was over a decade ago now. And this past week, we took a ride, we being me and my mom, to a shrine in New Jersey dedicated to Our Lady of Fatima. It was super cool to enjoy going to a place we both appreciate for different reasons and honoring that we're both into God, Jesus, and the Blessed Mother, and that our personal beliefs and practices are just different around all of it. I also shared my Mother Mary Oracle deck with my mom, and she thought it was, quote, lovely reading. Versus a few years ago, the first time she saw me with a deck and asked me how it wasn't sacrilegious. So all of this is about celebrating progress. I have so much appreciation for all the work I've done over the years, but especially after my last relationship around healing codependency and a lot of wounding from my childhood, and it's showing up big time and how this visit with my parents has gone. I am so much more able to accept my family for who they are as individuals and as a group. We're so much more clear on what things make sense for us to talk about and what things don't because they cause tension. We're more clear on what we each perceive to be quality time, what's fun and what's not. And I've been practicing boundaries with them for more than four years now. So instead of resistance, there's a ton of respect. I also no longer have any need for any of them to be any different than they are. I know what we agree on and what we don't, and I've even gotten to a place where certain things that used to annoy me or trigger me just don't anymore because I've resolved so many judgments and resentments I had been holding on to within myself. In a lot of ways, it feels like a miracle, and while it required a lot of grace and patience to get here, it's not a miracle. It's a tangible result of the healing and transformational work I've put in over the last several years. And I want to reiterate that, the last several years. This did not happen overnight. It has not been easy. It has been painful at times, and it has also been 100% worth it. I love my family, and I'm committed to them. I don't suffer them. I don't tolerate them. Um, And for many listening, I know this may not be a feasible reality for you for various reasons, and I want to acknowledge that in some cases where there are violent personalities or tendencies, histories of certain types of trauma or abuse, mental illness or other disorders, this may not be a possibility for you with your immediate family, and that is the beauty of chosen family or soul family. Finding those people in your life who are your absolute closest loved ones, the ones you can lean on, the ones you can rely on, the ones that you are loyal to and therefore no matter what, even if there's not a blood relation. Family is something we can all experience one way or another. So I have more thoughts here that I want to share on this, on how I got to this place with my own family, because this is a question I get a lot, and obviously I've done a lot of work around this. Um, Are my reflections going to be the only way to go about this? Absolutely not. But as with always with Sunday sermons. If I have an experience and it might be useful to some people, that's one of the reasons why I would choose to share it here. So here there's a quote by Thich Nhat Hanh, 
In order to heal others, we first need to heal ourselves. And to heal ourselves, we need to know how to deal with ourselves. So here's just a couple of the things. It's like seven or eight things over the last several years that I have realized how to much better handle myself. First is expectations and assumptions. It's really helpful to ask people what they expect. Clear up anything that you're not going to meet for whatever reason, and also never make assumptions. When we fill in the blanks on facts, stories, and details we don't have, we basically create an obstacle course for ourselves and others to navigate in order to find connection rather than creating an even playing field. The second thing is to grieve. In some cases, you need to grieve that certain things you want from your family are not going to be possible. Either it's not who they are, they don't have the capacity, or they're not willing to do their own work or take excuse me, or take responsibility for their part in things. When this is the case, it's hard. It's sad, and processing those feelings is very important. So is freeing yourself from shouldering the entire burden of the healing. When people show you who they are, believe them. I think Maya Angelou said that. And if they also show you that they've changed through action, not just words, let them back in, of course, with caution for your tender heart and while having solid boundaries. Courageous conversations are the jam. This means saying the tough stuff with love. It means not letting things go or sweeping things under the rug if it is important to talk about it. It means acknowledging when things are difficult and returning to love over and over and over. Sometimes this also means taking breaks, giving yourself space from people, returning to the toughest stuff later and chipping away at it over time. And if you've never read my book or tried the framework for Courageous Conversations in there, you can grab the book at untameyourself.com forward slash Amazon. Um, it's temporary out of print if you are listening to this between October and early November of 2017, but it'll go back into print by mid-November. But it's there on Kindle, and I'm also finally recording the audiobook this month in October, which will also be ready in November. You can also just grab the Courageous Conversation framework over at untameyourself.com forward slash conversation. My next point here is forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. And you know, for those of you who have been around for a while, you've heard me say before, um, forgiveness is for the forgiver. This isn't about letting people off the hook for crappy things that they've done. It's about taking your energy back and taking your power back from various situations and from various people where you've given it away or it's been taken. So one of my first forgiveness practices ever is based on the Hawaiian Ho'oponopono. Um, you can try it. I also have a video around this at untameyourself.com forward slash forgiveness. And I've added several more forgiveness practices to my personal arsenal since then, some of which I'll be adding to the Wild Soul Toolkit later this year, and a few others are could only do with clients because it involves energy work that I have to facilitate. But either way, I'm not the only person that teaches forgiveness. I have not invented forgiveness work. There's so much out there. There's beautiful forgiveness meditations available from other people. Um, we have a couple cards based around forgiveness in the Wild Soul Oracle deck. So however it is that it calls to you, speak to you or invite you in, having a variety of ways to forgive and to do that healing work is so, so, so helpful. My next point is not hiding, but also not shoving things down people's throats. This is a delicate balance. So letting go of your own needs to be right or being understood or the need to prove anything. Sometimes in claiming, claiming our power and owning who we are, we forget that other people getting on board isn't part of the process. This means that we have to get okay with however other people are going to respond and react to us and really hold steady in our beliefs, in our truth, and in what are the most healthy and healing choices for us as we move through these things. The next thing that has really helped me is developing a healthy guilt intolerance. That shit doesn't work on me. It's not something people in my family ever do on purpose, but unconsciously it happens. It no longer affects me because I really trust that everyone is having their own experience and it's not my job to manage or control other people's experiences, only my own. Which brings me to the last point, ruthless self-responsibility. I work through everything that triggers me as it comes up and I really don't over-dramatize or drag out things that can be easily resolved now. I don't hold on to old stuff. 
I let the past stay in the past to the best of my ability, and I have developed a healthy, positive expectation that people can and will surprise and delight me when I treat them as if they have the potential to do so. And again, that's when it has is earned. That's when certain people have shown me, you know, that they are doing their own work, that they are listening, and that they are willing <clears throat> to put in their own effort as well, and that I am not going to be shouldering the entire burden of healing or transforming the relationship. So that was a lot of stuff, and I'd love to hear from you. As always, you can find me on Instagram, at Elizabeth D'Alto, on Facebook, at Elizabeth D'Alto. And in closing, I want to blast you with a ton of love for this particular kind of healing, for the connection that you crave to have with those you love, for the inner and outer transformation in your life and your relationships and anything else that you desire from the depth of your soul. Have a beautiful, beautiful week. The show notes for this episode, if you want to get those links to anything that I referenced, are at untameyourself.com forward slash episode dash 198. And we'll see you next week.